Thank you for having me. I would like to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. Why your solos suck. <laughs> we all go through this as guitar players. Sometimes we get too in our head. Sometimes we feel like we need to be flashier than we need to be. And so today I would just like to kind of break this down and really get into the nitty gritty of what makes a great solo. In different kinds of music, there are so many ways that you can structure a solo depending on if you're playing pop or rock or blues or jazz, depending on if you're a shredder or if you're wanting to make big whale sounds. I mean, there are a lot of different approaches you can have to a solo. Generally, I think that there's a, a, an arc to a solo that you can start slow, you can start in maybe a lower register, and you can slowly build. Some of my favorite guitar players are experts, are experts at crafting a journey. I think that a solo should be a journey. It should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And sometimes those three pieces are completely different. It really depends on the song that you're playing in. But I will say, as a general concisis, um, it's, it's probably a better place to start as something that is a little bit lower maybe on the neck, some notes that are a little bit slower, and then you kind of want to end up here in like in something maybe a little bit more flashy, maybe to put that like final exclamation point on the end of your solo. So if I were to give you solo rules, which there are no rules to soloing, but if I were to give you a rule, it would be definitely think about the arc of your solo, how it could start in a simple less is more kind of a lower spot and then you can build up to this spot over here. Regardless of if your solo is two bars or if your solo is 24 bars. I mean, having an arc and a journey, you wanna take the audience, you wanna take the listener through a story in your solo. I always look at solos also, this is my second rule, I always look at solos as extra lyrics to a song. I think that playing guitar, you have the ability to play the additional lyrics that weren't written in the song. I love solos that are conversational. Some of my favorite guitar players are so conversational with the way they play their solos. So it's not only with the amount of notes or the melody that you're playing, but it's like the way they bend something like or the way they use their vibrato. It's not just it's or maybe they'll slide up or they'll slide down, or they'll hammer on, or they'll hammer off. There's so many different ways you can play a single note. So really incorporating that and adding all of those approaches into your vocabulary as a guitar player gives you so many different colors to paint your picture. When you really sit down with the solo and sort of figure out what it feels like it's missing. I always like to sing my guitar solos. I know whenever I'm in the studio, and I'm trying to think about, okay, what kind of solo do I need to play on this song? I usually sing something first. I sing a melody. I'm like, okay, in this chord progression, I want my solo to go. Or whatever it is. But I sing a melody over it so that I at least know a place to start. And I'm not just in the theory side of my brain being like, well, I need to play this note over this chord and this note over this chord. And sometimes it's good to have, um, you know, markers of your brain of if you're playing over changes or, or for sure staying in the key. Like sometimes markers are good, but I don't think markers are the end all be all. You know, you still want to emote some heart and some feel into your solo. So I definitely would say, Find the way you can be the most conversational in your playing. You know, find those little tips and tricks, the bends, the, the vibrato. Interesting, like, picking techniques. You know, you could rake into something. 
you can um, alternate picking, you can sweep picking, you can up and down picking. It's almost like different languages. It's like a translator for guitar. <laughs> it's like you're speaking in a different language with all of these different, you know, techniques you can use in your solos. I will say, you know, listen to the players that you love. Like listen to the players that you love and, and, and pick out things that, um, that you're like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. That's also how I, I just constantly get new ideas. Let's build a solo. I'm gonna record a little progression. I'm gonna show you how we could start slow and low and end high and a little bit flashy. Like I said, whether your solo is short or long, having that kind of idea of like wanting to build something up is always a good place to start. Let's loop a little progression here. Okay, so there's our progression. I'm gonna start low and simple. of how you can start slow and slow and you can build into this world where you're like, okay, I can, I can do a little bit more flashier things. I will also say the last rule I will leave you with is when I'm recording in the studio, I always bow down to the rules of less is more. When you are putting a solo down that's going to live in concrete forever, you really want that solo to say something. Then contrast to in a live space, you're playing in that moment, in the venue, and you're really playing to that audience in the moment. And so in a live space, all hands are off. I really love to play that solo for that moment in the venue. So a lot of times when I'm playing live, we will extend intros, outros, solos. Like I just, I just go. And I sometimes tell my band to leave me an unknown amount of time. Cause some, some nights I'll, you know, only want to play eight bars. Some nights I want to play 32. It just sort of depends. And so a live space is completely different in the soloing world to me than in a recording space. Guys, I'm Lindsay L. We talked a little bit about diving into the world of why do my solos suck? I hope I gave you a few tips and tricks today. Happy solo practicing. Marty, thank you so much for letting me take over for another lesson today. Make sure to subscribe to Marty Music, like this video, and go say hi. Check out my channel below. All the links are below this video. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.